Hi there, my name is Don Tipping and I'm here at Siskiyou Seeds, which is a small family farm where we grow a wide diversity of crops, but predominantly open pollinated organic vegetable, flower, grain, and herb seeds. And today I wanted to share with you a few of the insights I've learned over the last few decades about growing cucumbers, melons, squash, and watermelons. So these are all in the plant family, the cucurbitaceae, the cucurbits, if you will. They're all squashes, they're all botanically related. Most of them originated where they're you know, originally from is down in Mesoamerica, Mexico, and that general bioregion. And they adapted to grow in a warm, uh, subtropical growing climate. So as you can see, our weather outside here in Oregon on May 14th is rainy and cloudy. It's about 58 degrees outside. Uh, it's not exactly cucumber melon weather yet. However, a few days ago we hit 90 degrees Fahrenheit and many people may be inclined to want to plant these types of seeds in the ground. And I'm here to share a few of the tricks I've learned to be successful in growing the cucurbits. So one important tool I have here is called a soil temperature probe. It's just like a thermometer, but perhaps a little bit more heavy duty. I'll hold it up a little closer here. These are available at a lot of garden centers. You probably wouldn't want to use the kind of thermometer that you'd put in your mouth because it's not really designed for that. Uh, this is a little sturdier. I just did some tests and in the soil right now, it's about 58 degrees. Um, which is actually similar to our outdoor ambient temperature in my propagation greenhouse in the soil. It's 68 degrees in there, holding some uh, heat in there. So ideally the warm season crops like cucumbers and melons and squash, they're gonna want temperatures of about 65 to 70 degrees minimum to germinate. So, with that said, oftentimes I'll use uh, three inch pots, four inch pots with some soil to uh, start things like this is a uh, black tail watermelon. Uh, these were seeded about two weeks ago and you can see they're up. I have my first cotyledons, these are in the greenhouse. This one here is a cucurbita maxima, like a buttercup red curry type. Uh, this particular variety is called sun dream. Here we have a zucchini. Again, planted about two weeks ago, around May 1st, in a pot. And last but not least is a cucumber. And you can see it has its cotyledons and its first true leaf. So these were started in the greenhouse where even on a cloudy day, I have 68 degree soil temperature. Outdoor, if I were to plant these seeds right now, there's a high likelihood that they would rot in the ground and, or at least not be very vigorous. So I'm gonna just talk about a few of the different uh, cucurbit crops, and I've, I've broken a cardinal rule here. I've, I've, these seed packets have gotten a little wet. I'll have to go dry them out inside. Um, we have these resealable packets, so I'm gonna go ahead and open them just to show you a few of the seeds and talk about the different species. So cucurbita pipo, this is honey boat delicata seed. You can see the seeds are fairly small. Um, this species, Cucurba de Pipo, includes a really wide diversity of varieties, including all your delicatas, your acorn squash, your spaghetti squash. It also includes pumpkins. So this here, I have winter luxury pumpkin, which is an excellent pie pumpkin. Pie pumpkin, try and say that a few times fast until I get all tongue-tied. You can see these seeds are a bit larger, but they're still the same species, meaning they would cross pollinate if I were to try and save seed with that aforementioned delicata. Last but not least, the much celebrated, widely grown zucchini is also a cucurbita pipo. And these seeds fall about halfway between pumpkin seeds and the delicata seeds. So these all cross. Again, these are from central Mexico is where they originated, but we grow them widely around the world now. Um, another type of squash that you may grow in your garden is the Cucurbita maximus. This is a variety called Sundream. I showed you a start. 
This is what a seed looks like. It's a little larger than the cucurbita pipo in general, and they have a kind of a shiny color to them. Again, these are from central Mexico to southern Mexico is where they originated and uh, were widely grown actually by the indigenous people of North America. Another uh, vine crop that did not originate in North America, but actually in Africa, is the pumpkins, Citrellus vulgaris. And probably everybody's familiar with what pumpkin seeds look like because you spit them out when you eat them. So these small black seeds and Citrellus vulgaris watermelons are going to want warm temperatures to grow, as would this little kitten. Another vine crop that you might want to grow is cucumbers. So let's see, these are a pickling cucumber called Little Leaf H19. Makes little cute pumpkin uh, cucumbers that you pick young for pickling. And then there is Cucumus Milo, which is our musk melons, which includes all your honeydew and your cantaloupes. This particular variety is an orange honeydew called Herfueno Bliss. You can see the seeds are oblong and kind of small. One more uh, that we commonly grow, I don't have here, is the uh, Cucurbita Machada, which is the butternut types. So I've covered the main types. There's a few uh, unusual varieties that you may grow, like gourds or gherkins or bitter melon or something, but I'm covering the main ones. So we tend to start our first rotation in these pots, and then we get a jump start on the season as opposed to planting outside. You know, so I've, I've already gained probably two to four weeks in terms of maturity by doing it this way. They're protected from frost. We could still get frost here in Southern Oregon at this point. And then we'll also be direct seeding right in the ground after June 1st, assuming the weather's nice. Here in Southern Oregon, the weather can still be uh, rainy and cool. So again, consult your soil thermometer. Even the best planting guide is no match to the reality that you can measure yourself by taking measurements at your particular microclimate. So one thing for me, uh, Ashland, Oregon or Grants Pass, Oregon are about 30 to 50 miles away. And I find that oftentimes their growing climate is about two weeks earlier in general. But again, you're really well served to monitor these conditions yourself and keep a, a little log or a journal in your calendar or a garden journal to begin to understand over time when it's appropriate to plant these kind of crops that don't want to be growing in cold, wet soil. They want warm, moderately moist soil. While I'm on the subject of the cucurbits, one of the uh, pests that we're challenged with here in Southern Oregon, there's actually two different species, is both the striped and spotted cucumber beetle. And what they do is you, you plant your seeds or you put out your starts and they come and they, they eat your starts or they eat the little seedlings and they can be quite a menace. We've had uh, outbreaks where you might have 10 to 20 beetles on a single plant, to the point that uh, unless you're paying close attention, you'll think that your seed never came up. But the reality was it was turned into lace by the feeding instincts, uh, instincts of these bugs. So using floating row covers is one way to go about doing that. And what they look like, if you're not familiar with them, is they look like quilt batting. You know, it's just this, sorry, mine's not clean because we use them in the soil. It's just this thin fabric. So one thing you can do if you fear that you have cucumber beetles is plant your seeds out, put your transplants in, and then cover them. And weight down the edges with soil every so often or some rocks or weights of some sort. And that protects the plants. Once the plants get up to be, you know, the total leaf canopy of about a dinner plate, they have enough uh, leaf mass where they can withstand some predation by bugs and they begin to photosynthesize enough uh, carbohydrates and sugars that they can they can handle uh, some stress that way. And then you're well on your way to being you know closer to the summer solstice and when we have warm temperatures, long days, which just the cucurbits absolutely love and they're going to thrive. 
So hopefully you got something out of today that will benefit you and your garden towards your path of success of growing your own food, feeding your family, having a, a sense of purpose and fulfillment in local food security, resilience, and overall health. So I'm really grateful that uh, we all are growing things and we have something to look forward to. The process of growth and sun soil and water and human love and attention so all the best to you and your family peace